Right now, I'm going to just go through some things that I think Colts go through when you're adding speed, some problems that they have. Uh, you know, this is just what I think that they go through. You might have other problems, but this has just been uh, an ongoing thing for me as um, a trainer that most Colts go through when you add speed to them. Uh, lots of colts when you're adding speed and you you know you put a lot of rate into your horses going to the first barrel your first barrel is your money barrel and you know when you add speed to that first barrel that's when you know your horse is going to be finished is when you can run full blast or three-quarter speed to your first barrel as a colt and uh, a lot of problems I've faced is when I'm adding speed to that first barrel and even if I have them in between my hands and in between my legs, they're going to be wanting to turn that barrel so bad that they'll forget about their positioning to it. And they will start to cut off their pocket and they'll be running to it. And so pretty soon, you're here. You're right at the barrel when you're running and you're going to jack with them, running all the way to the first barrel to get them over and all that stuff. And that's good. So that's another thing to your basics. Your horse has to be broke slow and fast. So when your horse is running to that first barrel and really trying to cut in and turn it, then uh, you're going you're gonna to need all that basic training. You're going to need this to pick them up. And so that's just another thing good about your basic training that you have to go back to. So just when they're going to want to cut off that pocket, just keep them. Get that nose a little bit more. Keep them driving forward into your bit. And just always keep that basic training that you're going to need all along the way all the time. Another problem that I face is you when you're when you're running the pattern, you know, your colt's green, he's not going to know what you know. So you need to look into your spot. Run to your pocket and look where you want that horse to run. Because if you're looking over here, you're looking over there, you're looking at your barrel, that's where they're going to run. So you need to look at the correct spot and run to your spot. Okay, Jordan, explain to me and show me. Are you fixing to show us where that spot is? Yes. Okay, show us where that spot is so they know where to look. Okay, so I'm looking at my spot. I, look, I think my spot is my pocket. Right here where my horse is going to run in here, get underneath themselves, and sit down and prepare for their turn. So that's where I look. And if you don't have, if you don't have the proper position running into any barrel, they might blow off of a barrel. And this is another problem that colts have when you're adding speed. So you, you go around here and they might just come over here because you didn't have the right position going into your barrel. So that's just another basic thing. Keep them in between your hands and in between your legs, looking at your spot and run into that spot. They can't do, it, they can't do what you're asking them to do unless they're in the right position to do it. So again, you have to, a lot of horses, you have to run to your spot in between your hands and your legs and you're going to this spot, and some of them, you know, you go, okay, it's the third barrel. I'm almost done. And you, you have to think of every barrel the same way. You still have to go up to this bird barrel, sit down, say whoa, and get your bent. A lot of horses, you forget that on the third barrel. That's a problem that everybody has, and your horse will start stepping out over here and swinging his butt out because you didn't run up into your spot and ask your horse to sit down because it's the final barrel. So you've got to think you have to ride all your barrels the same. So you have to so when you practice you might have to kick their butt in a little bit more on the third barrel. And always ride your barrel the same way. But just always, you know, things don't have to be perfect at home, but you have to pick your run apart when you're away on competition. Mm -hmm. You have to know to, when you go to a barrel, don't start picking them up halfway there and trying to arc their body into it. Yes. Trying to save if you have a horse that's dropping into the turn or something like that. Yes. We see that 90% of the time of hit barrels going into them mm -hmm. or coming out is either a pocket has been cut off or started too early or too late. You always have to think this before you think this. Your horse has to sit down and prepare for his turn and get underneath itself before he can turn. Right. 
So you know, half the problem, half the reasons people hit barrels, they think it's because they need to go faster. They need to push their horse harder up in the turn. And that's usually not what it is. They usually need more rate to get underneath himself because most of the time the horse is just throwing itself into the barrel to do whatever he can to turn because you're not helping him prepare for it. Mm -hmm. Jordan, uh, let's talk a little bit about your martingale that you have on this mare right now and okay. explain to me why you have it on her and what it does. Okay. Um, she's still really light mouthed to get out of the O-ring and so um, since that she, she wants to get her nose up a little bit and I, I just haven't gone to the the tie down yet so I went ahead and went to this martingale and it just keeps them more balanced. And it's just not, it, she's not tied down, but she still can get up and move around, but she still can't get her head up so far that I'm out of control. And also, uh, I forgot to mention your saddle. Let's talk about your saddle. That's a really nice saddle, so tell me who the maker is and uh, where you got it. And This is um, Shiloh Saddlery. He's from uh, Springdale, Arkansas. Uh, just a wonderful saddle. Um, my saddle is a little, it's built different. Uh, it has a higher front and a, hi or a higher back and a higher front. Uh, it holds me in a little better. <laughs> and um, I just, people love this saddle. When people come to ride it and everything, I tell them, don't get on it unless you want to buy it. And uh, I just really enjoy it. I won the, a saddle like this. This is called the Contender that Shiloh Saddlery makes, and I won this saddle at um, Oklahoma City. And I called him, I told him, I love this saddle. Um, and that was the first one that he'd made and brought to the public. And so now I'm endorsing this saddle, and it's just, it's amazing. It really is. I really like the way the, the deep seat and keeping yes. you in and down mm -hmm. on that saddle. It seems like a really, and it's a really beautiful saddle, too, at that. <laughs> Thank you. Now I think what we, what we were going to do with this mare is we're going to add a little speed to mm -hmm. her and see kind of how she handles it. And if she has any problems, you know, you'll stop and speak about, you know, how you correct them and stuff like that. So. And this mare, she's a natural. She uh, has a lot of rate and tour. She has natural turn. Um, again, she's only been on the barrels for three weeks. So just to kind of show you what the time period where she's at and just things where they're falling apart. Now I'm going to uh, show you that my four-year-old filly that's only been started for three weeks, now I'm going to show you how she's doing on the poles. And just, just, wa and just watch the poles and relate the poles to the barrels and just how great it is for coordination and forward motion. As you can see, she's pretty good at poles for only being on it for three weeks, but just horses just really enjoy poles. They just love doing it. It's different. It keeps them real fresh. It gets the edge off of them. 